Hello Godotians, in this video I want to cover backing up and version control of your Godot projects. For this we will use Git, which is a hugely popular open source cross-platform solution for collaborative software development. But you can also use it on your own for private projects. Git is the software to install on your computer and it works synchronously with GitHub which is the online storage website for your project files. Here we are at GitHub and if you click on read the guide it will explain everything and clicking here you go to my particular account page and you can see I have various repositories. These are storage locations for my various projects. And we're going to click on the plus symbol there to start a new repository. So the first thing to do is give our repository a name. So I'm just going to call it demo and optional description. And then we've got a choice between making the repository public or private. In this case, I'm going to make it private so only I can see it. It used to be a paid option that, but now it's free on GitHub. And we want to let it automatically generate a readme file and then we also want to ignore certain files when we make a, a new Godot project some of the files that are generated we don't really want to back up and keep under source control so let's select one a predefined template for Godot so if we just type in a search for Godot we can pick it out there and then Later we may want to make our project public, so we want to have a license associated with it. A very common one in the Godot world is to use the MIT license. This claims us from any liability. This means they can they use our code, do what they like with it, but don't come back to us blaming us for problems. So let's now create our repository, and it should create the, the baseline repo and we have three files we've got our git ignore file the license and the readme which is automatically created here so let's go ahead and edit the readme it uses markdown language you can search online for markdown to learn how to do use it it's a simple way to format text and this pound sign with a space means it's the equivalent of a h1 tag in HTML for the large bold title of your project. So I'm going to just type some stuff in there and then and the normal paragraph you go whoops welcome to at the bottom here we we can commit we call it committing changes in git and there's a comment like you say it like the action that you you took like not in the past tense you say update and you can see it's updated and if we go to the click this link to go back to the root of our project you can see we have two commits listed that means the first commit was adding the files and the second commit was we edited the demo project readme and uh, let's see we can look at uh, click on a few things so we can examine the source code it's highlights it and because we it knows it's a good op project it is it is highlighting them the syntax and uh yeah so it, say in your project you don't want to you don't want to keep a track and make copies of certain files then this is where you specify the the pattern for the file name or folder path. But we'll leave it as it is for now. And the license, I've checked that out. This is the MIT license. And you can see at the top, it's got copyright me or your account on GitHub. That's the only customization made to this license. And the lawyers have written this stuff, which you just, it's best to just leave alone and it just explains the terms of anyone that, that should agree to if they happen to 
copy your project code. So now we have our repo and if you click on code, it shows us the link that is used to install it on our computer or to clone it, I should say. Let's copy this link, control C it. I don't download the zip because I'm going to use Git to synchronize with this project on my computer. And we want to do that from the command line. So control alt T on Linux. Just clear this. I'm in the command, the terminal on Linux. And then on Windows, it's called the command. You go down to the bottom left corner, click on the window. And if you type CMD return, it should come up with a command line interface, which is the terminal on Windows. Anyway, we're going to go, I've already installed Git on this computer and uh, it's free to download and install, just called GIT, so you can find it on online or in, on, I'm on uh, Manjaro Linux here and I go pack mac uh, space minus big S and then small s space git and then it will find that the software that you can install anyway let's go oh we want to be in the, the place where we want to install this where we want to clone it so let's go to our home directory and i set up uh, a folder called dev let's just cd into that change directory to the dev and then see what we've got and I've got various uh, folders for the different languages that I'm interested in like I've got C, I've got Go, I've got Godot and I've got Java, JavaScript, PHP, Rust etc. Let's change to uh, Godot directory and let's clone our where you go git clone remember I cut and pasted the link from github Get this link, control C, paste, and now we go return, cloning into the demo folder, CD demo, and if we go list, we can see the files, license, and readme. Now let's make a directory for our project source files. We go mkdir and then call it source src and now let's go into Godot where are you? there you are let's go new project in dev Godot and demo and source we're going to needs to be in a empty directory so we select this current folder make sure we change the project name we don't need to be called source demo project. How exciting. Create and edit. And it should fire up and create our. Let's start with a 2D scene. And I'd like to call it main. Change the type of the main node to control. Change. And make that layout fill the screen. And that should work. <laughs> Finally. So there you go. We have that. And if we run the actual project, we have to select our starting scene. So now we have some files in our project. Let's go to the command line again. Git status tells us what is going on. Our status, as you may expect. And you can see it says we're on master branch and we're up to date with the origin master. That is the the repo that is online on GitHub. It is synced with this. But we now we have some untracked files in the source directory. So well, we want to add these files to the repo. So if we go git add and then dot, that means add everything that is untracked and not being ignored by the git ignore file 
So that there we are, they're added. Let's go back and check status again just to see what happened. And these files have been what's called staged for committing to the repo. Like it's not final yet, it's just saying what we have added. Now we're aware of these files. And we want all of these to be in the repository, so we're going to go git commit minus m means add a message which we should always do so added project files except i've gone past tense we should say add project files just the way things are done in git so now we have them if we go git status you see our branch master our Current, we call them branches. See, you can have branches of developments. Like one may be the trying out a new feature, and the other is our our main branch, which is this one. And it's saying it is ahead of the origin master, the online one, by one commit, which is true. So, the way to get it online is to go git push this will push the changes from our PC up to the online repository. Now if we go back to the online repo we go click on this again to refresh it We before we had these three files only. Now we have the source folder and you can see the files are there. So if we go click on main scene you can see the code for that. So we got it like synchronized, okay. So now we've got a backup of our project online and also in the repo on our PC. So let me show you a feature of Git, like for example, this label. Say we, say for example, you messed up your project for some reason you deleted, accidentally deleted files or mess things up in the code and you you just got you can't go back easily to what you had before you just completely messed everything up so i'll go control s to save that see i've got some funny text at the end of hello world if we go to the command line here we can go if we go git status again you can see we've modified this file but say we just want to throw away our changes and go back to what we had previously we can go git stash I use this sometimes when I completely mess up so you do that and it says it saved it but it's to a temporary place and if we go git status again you can say it shows we're synced back to where we were we're in sync with the origin master There's nothing to commit we've got a clean working tree and if we go back here it's probably better to get out of Godot before you do that git stash let's just see if it did revert it yeah you can see it's it's gone back to the previous version so git stash is really useful for when you make a mess of things and one of the other key features of Git is you can create branches for experimental work. So, so if we go git branch, I'm doing this from memory. So uh, temp, for example, I've created a branch called temp and then what we want to do is check out this branch. So we go to git check out brand temp I see it says I have switched to the temporary branch so let's edit this let's go it's a temporary world here temporary world control s to save it let's just run the project so it says temporary world and now 
on the command line again if I go to git uh, what should we do git checkout actually we could go git add this will add our changes in the temp branch so you can see it's modified it, it it's it's recognized we have a modified file now we go git commit minus m make a change so i'm i'm committing this change and you can see it we're in the temp branch and it is giving it this version code this is what it does internally it gives it these long number or these special codes and if you were to release your software under a version it's called semantic versioning so you might have version 1.0 for example this is a tag a version tag you can add let's go git checkout master to go back to the master branch let's go to go to again and the demo project and we're back to the original hello world i'm gonna go project quit to project list and now in the in git let's on the command line let's go git this is how you you incorporate changes from the another branch into the master so i'm going to go git merge um temp this will merge the temp see it has it tells us here one file has changed and it's inserted and deleted and blah 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 so if we go back to our project you can go demo project and see we have now got those changes incorporated into our repository to the main branch git status tells us what status we're at so nothing to commit but the branch is out of sync with the origin master online so we want to go git push as advised here this will publish our local commits to the online repo so let's just type git push here we are and go online check it has in fact done it go to my repositories and this demo and it will it says like we got four commits now so click on that you can see the history of our commits with the messages that are accompanying them so hopefully this was useful as a quick introduction to how to set up a good old project using git to keep track of your files and have a backup online and a record of changes so please like and subscribe and i'll see you in another video have a great day